Welcome in to yet another edition, a postseason edition of the Kicking It with Coach Ruiz, presented by Baptist Health. Coach, coming off of a big win over Crosstown rival North Florida, a win that secured the South Division title for the Dolphins and grants you the number one seed and the right to host this first round of the ASUN Conference Championship, and, you know, an opportunity to host them even more if we win uh, and, you know, move on to that that next stage of the conference tournament. But coach, you know, let's let's celebrate and recap that win over UNF real quick. Just talk me through some of the highs and lows there. Yeah, it's crazy to think that we are talking about postseason now. You know, look, just felt just like a couple of days ago that we weren't sure if we were going to have a season, what it was going to look like, and how much interruption that was going to cause. And and now, yeah, we're, the guys have battled through. They've had to deal with a lot of different adversity, like everyone else had to, you know, with their teams, protocols on campus, training. Um, the experience has been different this year. So to get to, you know, the end of the regular season um, on, on a good note. And, you know, as you mentioned, some of the things you talked about, first seed overall, divisional, you know, divisional title, um, and going to the postseason with a um, home field advantage, right? Because the, the, the playoffs, the semifinals and finals were already predicted they were going to be in Jacksonville. It was going to be depending who the highest seed was going to be, whether it was going to be us or UNF to host. So not only we get to host the first round, the quarterfinals against Stetson, uh, but, you know, winning it, we actually get to host the semis and the finals as well. So just really proud of the boys, really proud of how they bounced back from early in the season, not getting the necessary results. I think we talked about our performance. We were, we were happy with our performances, but we really needed to change the culture of how we see ourselves on the field, imposing our will on teams defensively for sure. You know, we're coming off of three to four shutouts right now and all of our all of our wins, our four wins in conference have all been shutouts. Um, so a great testament to our back line, to the group defending, group mentality. Um, and guys just they're they're learning how to win games. Um, UNF was a very, very good team, very difficult. You know, they really handed it to us the first time we played them at their stadium. Um, and we made some adjustments and I thought our guys still played a really difficult UNF team. We got on the scoreboard early. And, you know, we had, to, we had to secure the lead for the remaining of the game because UNF had a chance to win the divisional title as well, given, given a win, especially with FCCU having lost the Stetson game the night before. So UNF had a lot to play for that night, and they, um, and they certainly gave their best shot, and I thought our boys fended them off really well. So just really proud of, of winning a game the greedy way, um, and that's, you know, that's a sign of a, good, of a team that is, that is ready for playoffs. Yeah, getting into the nitty gritty there. Um, you mentioned it. We scored early. Uh, Josh Marrera, uh, uh, you know, made the most of a really advantageous moment uh, at the top of the box there and, and fired home the score, giving the Dolphins a 1 0 lead. And then you, you packed it in. And it wasn't a situation where it, it was entirely obvious that the team was packing it in. You guys continue to attack and push. Uh, and, and really challenge you and F throughout, you know, there, you've seen um, what's the old, the old comment, like playing not to lose you guys mm -hmm. wasn't that it was very no, much not a, at all. A, 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 it, you could see it for at least from where I sat. I'm sure the fans saw it too, that, that this was a team that was determined to win the game, not, not lose it. Um, so, you know, it, it was an exciting effort. Matt Levy and goal brilliant again, as always, it's almost like, you start to forget about him the more he puts up these clean sheets, but because it's becoming commonplace, you don't give up a goal at home in conference play. You know, it had been a long time since we beat FGCU. It had been a long time since we beat UNF. It's been an even longer time since we've beaten both in the same season. And I'm not even sure we've ever accomplished what you guys just accomplished. Um, you know, holding the opposition scoreless at home in conference play and just oh, so much going for the Dolphins right now this have you had a chance to sit back and contextualize any of that uh, not really I think we're, we're kind of going you know reviewing one game at a time and getting ready for the next game I think we'll do that once the season is over um, you know ultimately the, the the top of the mountain is the championship it's the, it's the conference tournament and making it to the, the NCAA tournament so I think that's where our goal is and that's where our mindset is. But um, I think just the little things like you're mentioning, you know, with Josh Murrow, you know, his shot on top of the box, fantastic shot. I mean, he hit that on the nerve. He couldn't have hit any better. The keeper extended out as far as he could. Mm -hmm. but, you know, but Josh has been in that position throughout the year 
He just hasn't, you know, executed that one really difficult skill, which is a first time shot bouncing now, striking is, you know, cleaning through, but the guys just keep positioning themselves in the right place. We talk, talk about like, you know, make the same run five, 10, 15, 20 times a game um, and just wear the, the opposition out. And the guys are doing that throughout the entire season uh, and just are starting to accumulate good minutes. And you're right. Um, you know, we score early in the game, almost to the point that maybe too early, if you can call that. Not, not that I'm complaining, um, but but he really did change the concept of the game. And I think if the game had dragged on for a little bit longer, I think you would have seen both teams play a little bit more wide open, not increase their amount of pressure as early as UNF did. Um, and that might have benefited us because when we play teams that are a little more wide open, we feel like we can run with them a little bit, right? Our attack is very dynamic when teams just kind of put so much pressure on us, uh, we need to do a better job. And I think we're, that's the, been the point of this week, addressing how do we deal with pressure of that intensity? Um, but it, it just, it almost didn't benefit But you're right, we, we kept attacking and we kept pressing them. Like, you know, we, we didn't sit in, we didn't pack it in in a way. We were forced to defend our box a lot because of the amount of pressure that they put on us and where the game was being played. Um, but we try to come out and we just, you know, give credit to UNF. They made it really difficult for us. They put a lot of numbers for a very veteran, mature team. Um, but our guys kept it to your point. I'm glad that you mentioned that we were playing to win the game. Like we weren't planning to hold on to the lead or to hold on to the score. We're planning to win the game. And I think that was a, a great attribute to the guys. And we really do feel that we can score at any moment. I think that's the belief that these guys have right now that, given the right opportunity, given, given the circumstance, we feel like we can score at any moment against anybody. And the guys know that. So it almost feels like every time we get into an attacking zone, something positive is going to happen, especially in transition. I think our transitional play has been unbelievable. Um, so we're just excited to, to have accomplished those things, but very humbled to be where we are today as a group. And the guys have had another great week of training so far. You know, you just – sort of inspired a question there for me. You know, this team early in the year, and you mentioned it, was really having a hard time finding the back of the net. How do you go from a team that was struggling so hard to find that identity to a team now that has, you know, almost a wealth of options, you feel like, you know, guys that can hit you from anywhere, Jose, Reed, Josh, you know, Reggie, the list goes on and on of these guys who have, have popped and have been just these offensive weapons that are really pacing the league. So, you know, what, what's that transition been like from a team that was, you guys were struggling early to find someone to put it in the back of the net and then it's all come together and, and you're so dangerous now on that end of the field. Yeah, I think, I think it's not an easy answer. I think it's a combination of a few things. Um, I think we got personnel right um, and, and not even on the ball, but our personnel off the ball in the way that we, we press teams and we take the ball away from them, allow us to have the ball a little bit more. Uh, and then that personnel is a very dynamic personnel, as you mentioned, with Reggie Nicholas, Olivier, you know, Kyle on the right, on the left, and, and Jose on the right. We've just become a very balanced, dynamic team on both sides of the field, where before we felt like we were only dynamic on one side and not on the other side. So we were kind of easy to game plan against. Um, and then we have the guys that are coming off the bench. They're doing the same thing. They're keeping that kind of energy as well. So I think we got, I think we got a balance of personnel, correct? You know, we did make a, a, a formational change, which I would think allowed us to be a little bit more natural in position. Uh, we, you know, we added a third center back that made us a little more solid defensively. You know, ring strand, a freshman that's very good on the ball. So it allowed us to be on the ball a little bit more. Uh, we opened up the field a little bit more, made it, made it more difficult to defend. Um, and then guys just started seeing that. They started seeing how those chances started coming. And now it's like everybody wants to score, right? There's there's a desire to score. There's a desire to contribute on the attacking side. And this, this is a trust in each other. Everyone knows that if Caio, Olivier, Jose, Reed, um, Reggie, when they get on the ball, it's like I better get to my spot because the ball can get to me now. Um, and that just took time early in the season with a new team, you know, um, and getting the personnel right. So I think it's just a balance of it all, but certainly a chemistry on the field and a trust in each other um, that everyone thinks, you know, when the ball gets to Reed's foot, everyone expects them to hold up the ball, right? So it's like, if you hold up the ball, then we gotta, you better get in front of the ball uh, so you can threaten him behind. You know, when he gets to Kyle's foot and Ali's foot, they expect them to combine on the left-hand side and get across and 
similar to Jose and Reggie. And then you start talking about the guys that are actually below the line of the ball that are keeping the ball for us. You know, in, in, in Moreira, as you mentioned, and Jay Duncan Smith, and, um, and even, you know, just guys that are coming off the bench and performing really well. So there's a trust um, in performances, there's a trust in, in personnel, and the guys all want to contribute, which is great. To, which is it's a great thing to see. Yeah, that's all exciting. It's such it's such it's so great to be able to go back and and follow through in that process. We've all seen it, and it's, and it's been such an exciting year. Now, now looking into this conference tournament, they always say the old cliche is the one of the hardest things to do in sports is be a team three times. You know, you're staring that in the face now with Stetson. You, you've you've come on top with two results in the regular season against them. You get to host them, um, your alma mater, one more time here at uh, Southern Oak uh, on Saturday. Um, what, what's it, what, what's the message to the team? How do you, what, what steps are you taking to buck that trend that it's, it's hard to beat a team three times? Yeah, we're, we're almost looking at them as a brand new team. You know, I think when we played them and Stetson have had some, some tight, COVID restrictions that haven't allowed them to get on the same momentum as everybody else early in the season. Um, so I know they haven't had their full lot of uh, top players that uh, they will consider players of, of influence for them. So we really are, I mean, from a coaching staff standpoint, we are scouting them like it's the first time. We're looking at them like we, we don't know them. It's a, it's a brand new team. It's a team that we need to get familiar with again. It's been a couple of weeks since we've played them. We're a bit of a different team as well. We're defending a little bit differently. We're doing some things off the, on the ball a little bit differently. So we're going into the game, you know, from a preparation standpoint, as a brand new team. Um, they are on on a good spin. They, you know, they've had a couple of reasonable results. You know, they tied FGCU first time around. They've tied UNF and they lost 1-0 to UNF. And then they beat FGCU in their last game of the season. So I think it's going to be a team with a lot of confidence. And, and if they approach us, like they're the, like we're the same team, they will be surprised. And I think if we approach them, like they're the same team, we'll be surprised. So we need to, you know, in our case, we need to approach them like it's a brand new opposition and know that conference, you know, a tournament time is anything can happen. Um, it's one early goal that changes the game. So uh, what has worked for us, Matt, in, as of late now is worrying about us. You know, and I know that sounds cliche, yeah. but it really, it really has been. It's how do we get better every week? So, in a sense, we're not adding the pressure to the guys that it's a playoff game. I think we talk about it, and we know the magnitude of it. Um, so, it's not to not to blindside us. Uh, and we talked about it this week, but it's been great to see guys showing up before practice, just working on their individual training, individual technique training, and just looking to get better. That means that they're buying into to the concept of if we get better, right, on the ball, off the ball, in set pieces, in all areas of the game, then we'll give ourselves a good chance to compete on the weekend. If we worry about the opposition or if we think that we're good enough, then, you know, I think it's going to be a little more challenging. So right now it's about us getting better. I don't think we're still playing at our best. Um, and I think we, you know, we can do that this weekend. We have a good opportunity this weekend to be at our best or, or attempt to be at our best. And I think if we can do that, um, we're confident in our ability to, to be an, an opposition, not for the third time, but for the first time, which is kind of how we're looking at. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's all great. It's a great point, um, you know, in, in looking at it that way. And, you know, I, I think you'll find there's a lot of coaches around the country that are, are preaching the same message that it's, it's the ult ultimately it's about you guys. You, know, you just got done with the NCAA tournament. People have seen what, uh, what that type of run can, can do for a program. Um, you know, on the way out here, anything you want to leave us with as we prep for a big one here on Saturday? Yeah, our crowd was, was great last game. Um, we had obviously with the local rivalry game, but I do expect Stetson to bring to, to travel up some, some people as well. Um, you know, they're not too far down the road. and I know, I know they have a good following. Um, you know, just keep I just keep encouraging our, our parents and our friends and our, and our fans to come out and just be that 12th player on the field for us. I think our our Southern Oak Stadium is such a personal facility. It's so unique in the conference that we can feel it. We can feel the fans when they're on top of us, when we're doing well, they, they give us a boost of energy. So we encourage, we encourage people to come out. It's safe. There's a lot of social distancing. If you're not comfortable in, uh, in, in big crowds, 
you can you can there's a fence line that you can wrap yourself around there and you can walk around a little bit um so we just encourage you know fans to come out to to give us to, to give us the advantage of playing at home the boys fought really hard all season long to get the benefit to be the number one seed and to host the playoffs so you know we want to we, we want to pack the oak um and we want to have as many people here as possible to be that extra motivation that extra push so the guys can feel that and they're excited for that because they know the difference when there's a crowd and then when there isn't a crowd so high expectation six o'clock saturday against that's in first round of the playoffs um you know guys are on the good run and we want to continue that run it's great coach we're looking forward to it um you'll be able to find it on espn plus and um of course the live stats as always on jdolphins.com and we'll be watching and we'll be rooting for the dolphins and looking forward to a, a deep run here coach awesome thanks man all right have a good one <laughs>